Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about that drubbing that Georgia gave to Texas, kind of proved themselves as still the class of the SEC, and it's happened to Georgia before with Alabama, it just happened to Texas. They got a little bit humbled, a little bit of a welcome to the SEC moment, but it's how you bounce back in this year. No two ways about that. We'll find out on Saturday what Texas can do against Vanderbilt, but Let's get into a couple of these games because Tennessee got a huge win this past weekend, and it was a weird game. It was one of the uglier games, to be totally fair, in that first half because these teams were all over the place. They could not hit an open receiver to save their lives. Frankly, Tennessee probably could have been up by 21, 28 points at halftime if Nico could have hit an open receiver, but he couldn't. And then he hit one huge one down the stretch, and it was one of those moments where you kind of felt a lot shift. I I don't know if I'm making too much of this moment, and I've seen some Tennessee fans say this, but obviously fans get, to, uh, get a little bit more excited um, than you maybe you should. But at the end of the day, I do think that was a moment that could have changed Tennessee season. Seeing that ball thrown all the way downfield, Dante Thornton makes a great play on it. They get all the way in scoring position, take the lead in that game. I don't know. It was one of those moments where you felt like a lot of things flipped for Tennessee, where a lot of things kind of fell into place and things really, really started to get going. And that was kind of the story of the game because the reality is this Tennessee team is an absolute problem defensively, and they only have to make a couple of plays offensively. When they have a defense and a D-line and a back end that I did not expect to play as well as they did, Jamal McCoy was incredible all over the place. He did have one play that Maybe should have been defensive pass interference, but at the end of the day, played a really, really good job, did a great job covering Ryan Williams, and had a huge INT in the end zone, obviously. But then, on the other side, two very different halves uh, from Nico Yamaliava and Jalen Milrow in the second half. Nico came out there and responded from the first half that he had, missed a lot of big-time throws, came back out there, made all the types of plays you need him to make, made a number of plays with his legs, which is going to be a huge thing for Tennessee going forward. And then Milrow just kept making mistakes. And there are some questions about his health. I definitely have them as well. It did not look like the normal Jalen Milrow did not get to run the ball nearly as much as he wanted to. And frankly, I don't think that was necessarily something that Tennessee was just entirely going to be able to take away. So I do think there are some extenuating circumstances there and probably has to do with Jalen Milrow's health. Something to watch going forward. They got Missouri at home this upcoming weekend, but a massive win for Tennessee. There's no two ways about it. I mean, when you get that type of win and when you get to pull down the uh, goalpost the way that they did and people making fun of them for that, grow up. It's kids having fun. Calm down. Like, it's not that big of a deal. But at the end of the day, Bama gets absolutely eaten up by the state of Tennessee this year, and there's big-time questions in Tuscaloosa. I am not near questioning what Kalen DeBoer can do at this job, because at the end of the day, this is not quite his team yet. But they got some issues. No two ways about that. But How Tennessee was able to win this game, the halftime reset was huge. There were so many things that went wrong in the first half. Frankly, or actually, they got, they scored zero points in the first half for the third consecutive game. And in the second half, a couple of those games didn't necessarily respond all that well. The Florida game really had to pull teeth to get the scores that they needed to down the stretch to win that game in overtime. And then in the Arkansas game, obviously didn't bounce back from that, ended up losing that one. In this one, they were able to. They opened the second half with touchdowns on three of the first five drives and never really looked back. It was really, really incredible, and it was one of those things that I think Nico needed. I think he needed to prove to himself that he can have a slow start and then bounce back. And now, all the confidence in the world going forward, I would have to assume. And then, no room for Jalen Milrow. We talked about him possibly being injured. I would be very surprised if he wasn't, because 14 carries for 11 yards is not something that he does very often. Now, the Tennessee D-line did a great job of pinning him in. No two ways about that. But at the end of the day, Jalen Milrow is too an elite of an athlete to not get loose a couple of times. There's something else there. I feel pretty good about that. And then finishing. Bama's final four drives totaled three yards. So, That's exactly what you want to do. If you're Tennessee's defense, it was a punt, turnover on downs, and then the game INT by Will Brooks. Just an incredible game by this defense overall, and I can't say enough about what they're doing over there. It's just absolutely incredible to watch this team fly around. To me, they have the best defensive line in the country, and it's not all that close. They're all over the place. They're really, really incredible, and they're one of those teams that, although the offense is not quite what they envisioned this year, the defense might just carry you to a national title, and Dylan Sampson as well, because he was incredible in this one as he often is but where they go from here I think Alabama is a little bit tough to figure out because the reality is I think a lot of the issues go beyond the field if I'm being totally honest now there are plenty of issues on the field I'm not arguing that but I think this team has mental toughness issues I think they have issues with these players just not playing 
full energy the entirety of the game and I think that's pretty clear when you're watching it. I mean we had guys literally hitting step back step back jumpers while your team was getting stuffed on fourth down that can't happen why are those players on the field if that's what they're going to do on that play so there's a lot of stuff to figure out I'm not remotely near worrying about Kalen DeBoer at this job I still think he is very much the right man for it I still think he's going to have a ton of success coming forward they got to change a lot of the things about the way they go about business around there and I think they Definitely will, if I had to be honest. And Tennessee, this is huge for Nico's confidence. He absolutely needed a game like this, where everything was really ugly. He was doing the things that we worried about in the first half of the game. And then in the second half, he looks a little bit more like himself. Still missed some throws, still you know has some things to get better at. But when you make that uh, big-time throw at the end of the game to win that one... That's about all you need. It's so much confidence. It's so much to build off of. And then obviously going to UGA could be a program defining win. If you get that win, you are on your way to the SEC title. You're on the way to the CFP. And frankly, you might be the number one team in the country going in. So a lot still on the table is one of those turning point moments for Tennessee and Alabama really for the season. Tennessee now looks at the CFP and the SEC title with really, really real uh, aspirations in Alabama is left looking around trying to figure out what happened, pretty much. Moving over to Miami-Louisville, because this one was very different. It was not necessarily the rock fight that we just talked about. It was an absolute shootout. In the third quarter, one of the wilder quarters that I have ever seen in college football, I believe, I can't remember who was calling the game, but they wanted to give it an Emmy. I'm all for that. It was absolutely incredible. The drive charts in the third quarter were Miami touchdown, Louisville kickoff touchdown on the very next kick, Miami fumble, Louisville touchdown, Miami touchdown, Louisville touchdown. It was absolutely incredible. Explosive play after explosive play, and this Miami uh, team just found a way to win. That was the important part of this game, just finding a way to win, doing just enough, and it was Cam Ward again. That's just what this team is. It's Cam Ward makes all the plays in the world, and this defense does barely enough and that's the reality of this season for Miami going forward and we'll see if they can develop into a little bit better defensively but as of right now it seems to be a little bit of that LSU uh, last year type formula where you have a guy that's going to make all the plays in the world and you have a defense that's going to give up a lot of big plays the good news for them is they don't play in the SEC so there could be a, a, a couple few losses on that schedule for sure but Cam Moore doing ridiculous things the touchdown to Colby George that you're seeing right there ridiculous throw I, I I don't know many people in the country that would make that throw to begin with but then could actually make it get where it wanted to go ridiculous and this Miami team overall they're doing exactly what you need to do right now you know they're staying alive it's not necessarily about anything other than that because at the end of the day you stay alive you get a you book a trip to Charlotte you play Clemson you win that game you're well on your way to a playoff, and you're feeling very, very good about what you're doing. So at the end of the day, wasn't all that pretty. The defense has to figure out a number of different things. The D-line is one of those things that if they can pick it up, they can totally just win games by themselves. So there's a lot of potential there. No two ways about that. But if the D-line doesn't get there, we can see what this back end is about. So you're going to have to be able to kind of correct some things. Not necessarily, you know, all right, outright changes, not necessarily go crazy. But at the end of the day, you very much have to be better defensively or at some point someone's got to get you. At least I have to assume. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Cam Ward has enough magic. But when you talk about the keys to this game, quick responses was huge for Miami. It was absolutely incredible to watch this team. They did everything they needed to do. Whenever Louisville threatened, whenever Louisville got within seven points or even got tied one point in the uh, second half, Miami responded very, very quickly. They came right back down the field. Miami or Louisville tied the game in the third quarter. Miami back down the field in six plays, takes the back, the lead back, and never really gave it back. It was absolutely incredible to watch this team, and obviously Cam Ward magic is a part of this. Frankly, it's a part of every single win that they have going forward, but 21 for 32, 319, four touchdowns, and the biggest thing, no interceptions. If he has no interceptions going forward in the majority of their games, they're going to be a really tough team to beat because they're going to score maybe 52 points in just about every game going forward. And then the final one is controlling the clock. It was a very, very weird game with so many explosives, so many big plays down the field. Miami having 10 more minutes of uh, time of possession and running the ball 37 times compared to Louisville's uh, 21 was probably the difference in this game. Being able to elongate those drives just a little bit, just make those one or two extra plays that make the Louisville defense stay out there just a little bit longer, I think was the difference in this one. And it's one of those things that Miami, if they get that run game going, 
I don't know who's stopping them, if I'm being totally honest with you. So really, really good stuff from this team. And one of those teams that it's in a narrow path to victory for most of these games. But at the end of the day, when you have a guy like Cam Ward, becomes a little less narrow in a hurry. So remarkable uh, stuff from this team, and they just keep answering the bell. Every time there's a little bit of a worry in this team, they continue to respond and just make all the plays that they need to make. But where these teams go from here, I think for Louisville, they're still a dangerous team. They're very flawed. They are who they are, you know, kind of like Miami, just not nearly as talented all over the field where Louisville's going to make their big plays. They're going to struggle to stop big plays, and that's just kind of the way they're going to go about business. Now, this does make them a dangerous team. It does make them a team that can beat pretty much anyone on their schedule. It also makes them a team that could lose to just about anyone on their schedule if Tyler Shuck is just a little bit off that day. But the defense just missed the mark this year. That's probably the biggest takeaway if you're a Louisville fan where you felt like you had some dudes. You felt like Ashton uh, Gelati, a lot of guys that really are really talented players just haven't shown up there have been a lot of misses this season and they could easily finish the season eight and four but I don't think that's what they expected this year by any means so definitely a little bit of a miss mark but overall a, a team that is feels like they're moving in the right direction Jeff Brom whenever he has an offense is going to be very successful I think they're going to have to recruit the high school ranks a little bit more aggressively going forward. But overall, really good stuff from Louisville as a program, and I think they're going to move forward more than fine. But this year, probably not their year. And then for Miami, it's been ugly. No two ways about that the last couple of weeks. It's it's been a, a fight, but you get the wins, and that's the important part. Cam Ward in this offense is going to be an absolute problem for any defense they face, and the defense, the good news for them is they don't have to be near perfect. They just got to make a couple of plays a game, get that one or two picks a game, and then you're gonna probably going to be able to win 90% of the games that you play in. Obviously, they feel like a team as of right this second that they're going to play really good football throughout the regular season, maybe go undefeated, but when they have to play a Clemson, when they have to play a playoff game, they're probably going to struggle. Now, a lot of things can change. If that defense comes along a little bit more, then obviously my tune will change quite a bit on that. But right now, they look like a team that is executing the way that they need to. They're winning the games that they need to, but at the end of the day, at a certain point, you got to line up in front of Clemson. At a certain point, you got to line up in front of maybe Texas or UGA or Alabama, probably not Alabama, or Tennessee, and I don't know if they're going to be able to respond. That will be an interesting thing to watch. Maybe they're a team that rounds into form towards the end of the season, and that defense is a good thing going forward into the uh, CFP, but as of right now, they're a team that just keeps teetering, and at some point, I just have to assume they're going to fall over, but we'll see what happens with that. We'll take our second break here, and when we come back, we got to get into a couple of teams that just made some real statements. LSU might have been the biggest one to me, but Indiana, not nearly far behind them, so we'll, we'll talk about that right, about, uh, right after this, so stick with us.